Safer6.co.uk Sponsors of The Haze Hour And indeed it is The Haze Hour here on Thursday night the 9th of May the day before Friday the 10th and two days after Tuesday the 7th it, it was, It's was. it been a queer week this week Ascension day Pardon? <laughs> Doesn't matter Ascension day? It is Apparently the day is Europe day How ironic is that? <coughs> Really? Yeah. Queer day to day. I am joined tonight in the studio <laughs> by the two lads with the biggest pockets in the whole of the North East. Oh. I was thinking the same, Keith. What do you mean by that? I don't, I don't am know I getting what anything by that? No. Why? I don't know Why? What I'm dying for one of them metal oh, tanks. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll you swap buggy. you for a <laughs> new uh, VV Nova. I'll pass on that. One. I've got one. Oh. Do you want a black one? No. Why? Because I've got one. There's not much I haven't got. You name it, he's got it. That's not true. But shouldn't you share it? Could I not even lend one? I for do. Us? Trouble is, it's usually with him. I, I just keep quiet on issues like that. Yes, They're sensitive, yeah, yeah. very yeah. sensitive, those. I, I should introduce my uh, my two partners in crime tonight. Right in the middle, the rose between the two short-haired thorns, because we've got hair. How kind. <laughs> it's no problem. We have Keith. Hello. Well. There he is there. And over on the right, in place of Daz, who tonight... <laughs> He's suffering badly with a pain in the gob. Uh, he's had a tooth out and two fillings were here. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, he has my sympathy because I hate people messing around in my mouth. But tonight we've got Keith Mark II. It's Keith Graham. Mark II. It, and, and, and it's going to be it's gonna be a good night because Graham's been a busy boy. How long have you been vaping now? Four, we'll be about five weeks, five, but six weeks. Five weeks. And when you see what he's been doing, oh, yeah, aside from yeah, the stands, oh, right. you'll be... You'll be totally and I'm using stunned. Good machines. Look at that. <laughs> You'll be totally stunned. I'll just leave these two to talk, talk by themselves while we play the titles. It's going to be one of those. Don't expect any fireworks out of yours truly tonight. I didn't get to bed until quarter past four this morning. I'm wrecked. So here we go. We'll start with uh, the titles because that's a very good place to start. On the show that's called, are you all ready for this? On three. One, two, three. The, the Here's, Here's Hour. hour. It's not a health and safety issue, it's music. Well, you say so. Well, it's, I think yeah. it's brilliant music. And I, funnily enough, we were just mentioning while we went through the titles, the number of different looks yours truly has had over the last two years. Quite a few. Two and a half years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's all to do with the hair. Apparently I look younger now, you know. I suppose you do, yes, with uh, that style, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of short hair, glasses, you know. What's not to like? It's all good. I always used to think you looked like a sort of biblical figure. Some of those. Uh, which one? Uh, the one where you had the the beard. No, I meant which one. biblical figure. Uh, <laughs> I won't go into that. Tell you, tell you afterwards. <coughs> oh God, every time you see him. Say that again, Chris. It's the one that makes you say, "Oh good God," every time you see him. Oh right, no, oh, I've, heard, right. I've heard plenty of young ladies say, "Oh God," but not "Oh good uh, God." No, it's that's a completely different kettle of fish. <laughs> Let's not go there. Um, yes, where were we? before we went into the titles? You've been uh, a member of the vaping. Rewind. You've been a member of the vaping community for five weeks now. Yes, I pretty much. Evic in your hand. Yes. But you got the tools out. Yes, I did. I I wanted to make a mod, just a mechanical one, just a, quite a simple one. Aye. Uh, but I, I liked it. I tried it and I liked it. <laughs> it's 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 absolutely stunning. It is absolutely stunning. And I'm going to have all sorts of problems with this software tonight. But never mind. We'll battle through. 
Um, and you've got it with you, haven't you? I have, yes. I shall go to Close Yuppie Camp and do some zoomy gene. And I shall hold up the item in question for here it is. And get it right in the middle. And I'm doing... Don't get too close, Keith. Whoop, focus. It's focusing on Keith. I'll have to get really close. There you go. Too close to Keith. It's really close to your top pocket, this is, Keith. It looks like a pocket watch with a growth, doesn't it? With <laughs> a growth. <laughs> a pocket watch on C. Alice. I even. take that as a compliment. <laughs> it's it's just, just it only really took us three quarters an hour to make. Did it? As long as that. <coughs> well, actually, um, while, while, while wow. Graham was doing it, he filmed it, didn't you? Yes, I, well, I tried to. He tried to, and then I've been doing some editing. So I'll go press the button and away you go. Oh, go on, man. Don't complain what's in it. If it's custard, you'll love it. Yeah, it's good, that, isn't it? Oh, look at this. You see the look on his face there? <laughs> Close up on Kim. Yeah, that's very clever, that. <laughs> Plug the charger in there. All right. Shall we see how we made it? Ah. Could you fancy one, making one of those, Keith? Well, uh, I'll see how it's made. What right. have you got in it? Blueberry. It stinks. <laughs> oh, oh, I thought blueberry. Blueberry eye. Right? It absolutely honks. Right, this is this is how we made it. Watch the. I'm fascinated by this. First time, five weeks. Five weeks. Watch this. Hello, my name's Graham. Uh, today I'm going to be making. Basically, one of these. No, not an EV. Uh, but I am going to be making a mod now. I've never made mods before, so I'm just going to wing it, basically. Um, so, how are we going to start? First of all, you've got to think of something you're going to make a mod out of. Uh, I was actually walking around the pound shop the other day because the pound shop's great, you know, you can, I can't afford anything in the pound shop. So one shot I know I can go in and I can come out with something, no matter if I've had a bad, bad week at work. So anyway, I got this, uh, which is a portable ashtray. You flick it and it flips open and a little leaf comes out the side. Uh, to put your cigarette on, etc., etc. Um, because I don't smoke now, I just what's the point? I might as well make what used to be an ashtray into a mod. Uh, it's all steel, uh, and I think it would look quite good. The only problem is with it being all steel, uh, there's a higher chance of it shorting out, uh, and with it being my first. One that we've ever done, no doubt it will short out. Uh, but how about we we'll give it a go and uh, let's see how long it takes. Uh, first of all, we're going to have to sort of figure out where our wiring's going, how it's all going to fit. Because if you can imagine, it's quite small. Uh, if you can imagine, there's a full roll of red tape uh, and a roll of red tape, not that big. And thickness wise the roll of red tape on that cam is literally thicker than this so we've got to fit a battery in there a switch plus the 510 head and because I don't want to be taking it to bits all the time I want to fit a charging plug so the battery stays in situ all the time and you just plug a charger plug in the side uh, obviously with it being a small I can't get an 18650 battery in uh, but I am using a lithium battery um, which actually come out of a helicopter believe it or not just a small model helicopter uh, it's pushing out it's pushing out 4.1 uh, volts so it should do the job but I can't imagine it lasting very long but how I see it is something like this is more just gimmicky, uh, not, it's not really for practicality. Um, if you want something that didn't run out, well, strap a car battery to your back and uh, there we go, you've got a lifetime supply of battery. Um, if I want something not to run out and be totally practical, I'll go back to my EVIC. Um, 
but stuff like this is just fun, unusual, and it's not you can't buy it off the shelf. Uh, so how are you? Let's let's give it a go. Let's see what happens. Dremel. So I've got a drill bit in my Dremel. Uh, can't beat a Dremel, and I'm going to want to create a hole for there. Now obviously I could have fetched a good big drill home and uh, put the exact hole in straight away uh, but it's trying to keep a hold of that when you've got a big drill bit in because when the drill bit just comes through not only will it dent the top of the tin it quite possibly could just spin off and uh, fly into our lass's kitchen and no doubt no my luck it will break something so I'm going to just opt for a Dremel uh, using the, the Dremel um, I've got a really good tip in there, but I forget the name of it. Uh, but that one drill bit cost us £12. Now it's for putting rivets in on steel sheet sheeting on buildings. Uh, so it's a good tip, so it should go through here no problem at all. Uh, just to be on the safe side though, I'll move these out of the road. To be on the safe side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom that in uh, and I'm going to put a little bit of tape on. I have the tape here, like that, just to stop the drill from slipping. So, on there, and because the tin is engraved, If I rub the tip, you should be able to see where it is, but you can't. So what I'll do is I'll put a black dot on there, squash the tip over the top, and that's automatically, I can see where it is now. So what I'll do is I'll just put a little cross over that dot, and that's where I need me hole. So what we will do is fire the Dremel up, put that down there so it doesn't slip. I wouldn't think that tin come from the pound shop, but it's good metal lad. We've now got a hole in there, as you can see, one hole. Now we need to ream that out, which could be a little bit tedious, uh, but I've got some new Dremel tips, uh, so let's see how hard it is. Yeah. Now, if my calculations are right, the 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 thing that attracted us to this tin is it's got a pattern on it. If you can see, it's, it looks a bit like a shell, actually. Now, when the pattern comes to an end, it comes to a circle there, which is pretty much the same size as the 510 adapter. So, basically, if I hold that there, it is. So it's going to even look as if I engraved it. So when I sell this for like a thousand pound, not, um, let's see, let's see, should look good. So. For nine ninety nine, I don't think them tips are doing too bad. That was that was all right. Um, I'm not going to take the hole to the correct size straight away, um, because with these at five ten adapter adapters, uh, at least I think that's what they're called. You have to excuse us with the with the names and stuff. I haven't quite learnt everything yet. It hasn't got much of a lip, so it needs to be. A tight fit 
Um, so what we'll have to keep on doing now is, it's a little bit trial and error, is hold it up, hold it on, and take a little bit, and a little bit, and a little bit, just until we get there, basically. So. How about that? Uh, right, so as you can see now, that fits in there pretty good. Yeah, let's get on with some wiring now. Here we go, so that fits in there lovely. Uh, a bit of dust in there. Right, so that's where we're at my. Uh, is just going to screw on to so we'll put that like there this is the battery we're going to be using uh, which like I say was out of my model helicopter right so now bear in mind this battery I've took the the shroud off the top and this is like an aluminium like tin coating so what we're going to have to do, just for the time being, is put some tape around the top edge of the battery. Just to fold that back on itself. Obviously I want to take the tape off afterwards because I want the battery to be in its proper packet and look as, as professional as possible. So I will then take another bit of tape and stick it round the front like that. Now obviously all this will come off and uh, we'll think of some way to shrink wrap it afterwards. Uh, but just for now it's to protect the the circuit earthen out on the side of the the tin itself so basically I want that to go in there like that hold them wires down that will shut ensuring they stay down or could end up with a bit of a bang and I will have enough room for that to drop in like that as so and just putting the battery in that is give that that little bit weight which takes it from a tin to now feeling a little bit solid so we can now start to put it together I would say now that live cable has got to go to that right well, over there because obviously when I took the battery out of the helicopter this was all coated in a, a yellow plastic uh, but I had to take that off uh, to fold that bit back to make the battery smaller to get it into the tin uh, right so I'll lift that up and I'm just going to see if I've got some normal cellar tape which would be see-through I'm going to be able to see them that looks pretty alright. You can still see all that and it's insulated. Uh, ideally to insulate it totally would have just been to wrap it full of black or red insulating tape. Uh, however, I like the looks of things. Uh, so, that is going to go in there like so. Right. So now what we've got to think of is the plug for the charger and the switch. Now inside this tin you've got a mechanism which is like the catch to hold the door shut which is a spring. Now this spring goes right the way around the tin itself so basically I'm going to grab that and unhook it you see there and give it a jiggle and that'll come out 
basically like a spring and a still saw or a strimmer of uh, plunk that there for the time being. Right, so our battery's going there as far up as that as possible. So, what I'll do is I'll get a marker pen. And I'll just draw that line across there like that. The Safer6.co.uk sponsors of the Haze Out. Yeah, so I, on the kitchen table. Mm, yes, my partner was away, you see. Aye, not, uh, not around. No, because I wouldn't that. have been able to do it. I've got a commercial <laughs> unit, I should have been in to do stuff like that, apparently. Oh, right, well, yes, I understand that. Now, I've, I've heard from Chris that people want another, a closey up look at it. So I'll get as closey up as I can, and we'll have another look at it. He said, holding it in the right place. And Did then you realizing see I didn't glaze over? Not at all. I'm, I'm wondering when you're, uh, you're going to make one. I'm trying to get this focused and it's not easy. <coughs> let's, uh, let's cut to it. There it is. <coughs> and as you can, as you can, as you, I mean, this, this is gorgeous. I do, I like this a lot. Button there, red button. Um, that's the, the charge unit. There, he said, I'll get, I will get it in focus. Good grief. Button there, charge button. Connector on the top. And this has got an, an iClear 30 on it. Yes. Darren? Um, have you tried it? No. Uh, well, I tried it with the other... Uh... Have a blast. You don't mind them having a blast, do you? Of course I don't. Good. Just as pleased. Because I had a blast and you didn't tell us there was bloody menthol in it. Uh, well, I did hear you didn't like it. I hate <laughs> oh, it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that, that, that little battery that you've taken out the helicopter, 550 milliamp hours, how long is it lasting you? Around about two days, vaping on and off. And this would last about 50%. For the same time that lasts from fully charged to flat. So that must be proper milliamp hours. Yes. Well, it would have to be because it, the, the helicopter stuff's a different kettle of fish. Yes, it's why it's running three three biggish motors in a helicopter for what nine minutes. Yeah. Plus servos to move things round. So it was the only thing I had that night to make a battery out of, <laughs> to make a mod out of. Well, uh, apart from the juice, it's, it's everybody okay, no. calls my juice. Well, I'm not, yeah. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I mean, you want hey, to have pack, a go with that one. Uh, just pack up the building and, and make those. That's a, well, on the kitchen table. 
Well, I could, yes. As you all know, when I first started, Darren, uh, who normally sits here, give me a lot of gear. So this one, I'm actually going to give to Darren. Uh, to replace his missing Bobo? Not or to the replace book. the Bobo. I've actually brought something for you today to help you find the Bobo. Actually. Oh, what you, what you got? Well, it's a new tool I bought from work. Right. Um, a Bobo detector. It's a Bobo detector. Well, you always see him, Darren sat on his Bobo. Right. So I wonder if we could use this telescopic <laughs> camera and screen to find the Bobo, just in case it's behind the couch or anything like that. <laughs> God. <laughs> what? <coughs> so, Can I have it? <laughs> Bobo detector. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dearie me. How do we switch it on? Press the on button. I'll press the on button. The on button is pressed. Oh, yes. Yes, you would definitely be able to uh, find the bobo. Um, Keith, would you just know what I mean? You could, use that for, <laughs> you could use that for all sorts of surgical procedures. I'm just thinking, you know, I mean, it would be uh, well, <laughs> good luck. Hey, I'll tell you what, can, my love's coming out the other side. <laughs> That's, I wonder... <laughs> Has it got an output on it? Yes, it has. It goes straight onto a screen. It's got a memory card so you can record. So if you record uh -huh. something in a cavity... <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> you, can look down your, you can look down your eye, look down your drip tip and see what state your coil's in. You can record it as well. Does? If you're watching, we left the drill noises in specifically for you, Sunshine, so it would remind you of today's events. But when you come up next week, we're going to see if we can find the bobo... <laughs> That's brilliant. Just don't scratch it, dear. No, no, well, I'll coat it in Vaseline first. <laughs> Probably look at behind chairs. <laughs> if it's leather, you don't want to scratch the leather. Oh, right, I get you. What are the possible use would there be for Vaseline with a camera that size? Just to get down the leather, right. Just to get down the leather, yes. <laughs> Actually, I have seen a camera that size once before. Well, uh, I, I had a urinary tract infection. It wasn't. Well, nice. I, I, no. <laughs> wouldn't need it yes, as long uh, as that. Uh, yes, what, uh, you cheeky <laughs> monkey. <laughs> yes, I've been. Would need to be twice as long as. I'd, hey. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, I How know where you're you? coming from on that. Yes. That was possi possibly the wrong choice of words, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Uh, what sort of juice is in that? It tastes like a bonfire. Butterscotch. Butterscotch? If that's butterscotch. Let's have a try. <laughs> it wants to be. I've just ordered 50 ml. <laughs> butterscotch? Is there any juice in it? It's full. Are you sure? I know it should have a glass thing on it, but it's full. Try that's that one. definitely 100% butterscotch. Really? That? Yes. Mmm. It's reminiscent of something, but butterscotch isn't it? Cheesy. Cheese. But never mind. What's in that? Um, right. Well, where, where had we got Give there? us a go, because I asked Darren to taste that, and he wouldn't give us it, because he said it would get cold on the show. What, custard? Well, you know. Beautiful. Really? Oh, I like it. I'll be, well, you know, how long I've been. I know, I've been uh, smelling it wafting over the garden fence. <laughs> Do you like that? It's all right, I. Uh. Oh, Jill came through yesterday. She said, are you making custard? I said, no, case in the back garden. Oh, God. <laughs> Funny, yeah. Seriously? All right. Well, you can... smell it for miles. I mean, it's not entirely unpleasant, but it, it does stink like it. You can smell it. I'm not no, no, fine. No. It's... Oh, it's not being nasty or out. Yeah, no, Stinks. no, it's very tactful yes. as usual. So you'd gotten to the point where you'd drawn the line in. Yes. And and the next bit, I presume you were going to be, well, I know you were going to start drilling holes, were you not? Yes. And uh, so does I've left the words and, and what have you in. So if you don't like dentists, just stick your fingers in your lugs. That's the easiest way to put it. Because this, this is fascinating, mate. I've got to tell you, major kudos, because that thing is so small. Yes. It's tiny weeny, not very big. Weeny tiny. And I'm, I'm fascinated by this. We're not going to finish it in tonight's show either, just to keep you on tenterhooks. Here's the second bit. Part de. Oh, draw that line across there like that. Remove the battery. Then that means I've got a line inside so I know where the battery would be. Uh, it's pointless trying to move this with the battery in and hoping for the best. 
Uh, I'm also going to draw a center line from the circle we cut out there for the 510 threads to the circle here for the clip. That means when we put the switch and the jack plug in, we can have them symmetrical like that. Uh, doesn't really matter, but it just adds to that final little bit. Uh, so, this is the switch I've got, which is literally just a, a push switch. Uh, so you push it in, it'll ignite, uh, let it go, it'll stop igniting. Uh, it's quite a size. Now, it was the only one they had the other day when I went to the shop. Um, I can get smaller ones, um, but because I'm impatient, I wanted it ASAP. So, let's put the switch in. So if I just unscrew that grub screw there, it's not a grub screw, it's a nut. Uh, I'll take that nut off. I'll take the Loctite washer off. So I'm left with that, basically. So what we're going to have to do again is drill a hole in the side and then ream it out a touch. So, for this part I can actually drop the battery back in uh, and just see what play I've got. So if I put that round about there, I'm going to have enough room. So we'll talk about there. Like that. No way I've got it is pretty much the best we can get. So out comes the battery, shut the lid so we can centralize the switch. And if we literally just get it right on that crease, like that. Now I'll keep my finger like that and I'll go around there and I will mark that like that as well. So as you can see there, I've put a line right the way around. So the jack plug and that will be in the same place. So back to the Dremel. First of all, because I've got this tip in, I'm literally going to grind an area inside of it. That one solder onto to connect the earth because um, you would have to get a lot of heat into it to solder over to the t onto the top of the chrome. While I'm on with this drill bit, I will put a hole in the opposite side for the charging plug. Put the Raymond bit in. There is a touch more.
as Del Boy would say, perfect. Well, perfect. So I'll put the lock and washer on. Uh, and I'll fit that into there like so. And I'll then get me nut. And I'll fit that over there. Or just like that. Right, that terminal there is over our black line. So I think what we might have to do is bend them terminals over a little bit just so it doesn't hit our battery. Uh, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. We'll literally give this a little bit of a tighten up. Trying to be careful not to scratch that expensive steel. Because I don't think it's tin. I actually think it could possibly be silver, especially because it comes from the pound shop. So, yeah, definitely sterling silver. Now, I've just thought of something there, as I was marking that nut by pressing my pliers too hard. I've turned the switch round, which is now going to allow us to push them pins round a touch to allow the battery to clear them. But I'm going to have to turn it the other way just until we solder it. Um, so. Like so. And I think that is quite gimmicky, as you can see, one button. Well guys, we're quarter of the way there. Next is the charging plug, which is going to be a bit of a pain. And how to fix that into the steel is going to be even harder because it's not like that's got a lot of nut on. And it's going to have a lot of force when you're pushing and pulling the plug in and out of it. So, let's have a go anyway. Right, Dremel, good old Dremel. Get there slowly, but there, uh, get there. Right, now I think we'll stop at that. Uh, as you can see, I've jammed it in there just so we need that to be really tight because the only way I can think of gluing it into the steel, you can drop a bit of super glue on, but after time the super glue is quite rigid, it's going to it's going to crack off. I think we'll put a bit of super glue, mix a bit of super glue on, let that set, and then we'll put a bit of uh, hot glue on it. I think that'll uh, that'll do the job. That all looks good. So as you can see now, we have a switch, a jack plug. Uh, and don't forget, we also have our atomizer, which, let me say, clears them as well. Do, 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 do. Right. So let's try the battery in. Try uh, that atomizer in. I keep on calling it that atomizer, it isn't the, your tank, that atomizer is in your tank. Uh, but hey ho, you just know what I mean. That was the Go. end of part de, and there's there's more to come. What was that about condom tins? Tins? Uh. <laughs>
condom tins. Condom. I went in the pub the other day, me and my partner alone, I went in the pub and the, the condom machine in the toilets actually give out tins. So for your pound or whatever they are, you get a tin and I actually, it did cross my mind. I wonder if I could make one of them Durex tins or whatever they're called. In, uh, Other condoms are available. Yes, yes. And can Trojan. I just mention, and I must apologise because it's making us cringe watching this film back. I keep on calling these 510 threads every different thing. I think I call it an atomizer before. Just for those people who's new to vaping, the atomizer's actually in this thing. That's a 510 thread. Connector. A connector, well, see, I connector. 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 It's a thingamajig. As Chris would say, it's a doodah. It's a doodah. It's a doodah. And if it's a doodah, doodah, dear. Yes, it's all good. Uh, we'll take a quick set of adverts. And when we come back, I might get a little bit serious just for a little while. And then we might play the third part in of, uh, of the build. We'll see how things go, but I do need to get a little bit serious tonight because of the way things are. So we, we shall be back in uh, less than 100 seconds. Save the Six. Sponsors of the Hayes Hour. And we're back in the room. Echo, echo. The train now standing on platforms five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten has come in sideways. Right, we'll stop that. Um, I want to get a little bit serious, if I may. Um, as a lot of people watching this will know, currently the whole EU thing has come to a little bit of a head, as in amendments were due in um, yesterday. Uh, amendments to the tobacco <coughs> products directive and my understanding is that 1300 have been tabled and they've gone off for a bit of um, bit of translation before they're published you might know how i know this and i know this because of chris davis mep who published this on his website today and this is a letter that he's been sending out to people but it's also available on the web um, and he's saying you have written to express concern about the european commission's proposals for revising the EU Directive on the Sale of Tobacco and Related Products that would restrict the availability and nicotine content of e-cigarettes. Um, and, and you'll see there that it says that there are some 1,300 have now gone for translation into various EU languages. I'm going to go past the bit where he says he's opposed and get to the bit at the bottom, which is the important part, where he says, Let me refer to the politics and what you may be able to do to influence the final shape of the law. E-cigarettes are new products that enable the inhalation into the lungs of a vapour that includes a known addictive substance and trace elements of other chemicals. It is perhaps not surprising that the first reaction of many people is to say that their use should be strictly controlled. What is too often missing from the debate is that tobacco cigarettes kill 700,000 people a year in Europe and that by comparison the use of e-cigarettes is hugely preferable as an alternative. 
As the issue becomes better understood, I believe that many MEPs of different nationalities are starting to question the approach being advocated by the Commission. But time is short and countries are making their voices heard. I'm sorry, there are too many minds to change before we vote. My, I do apologise. Time is short and there are too many minds to change before we vote. I hope that users of e-cigarettes in other countries are making their voices heard as effectively as they are here. But there is more work to be done in the UK too. The UK is represented by 73 MEPs and anything you can do that will encourage e-cigarette users to contact their regional representatives about the issue will be useful. I know of only a few MPs who have declared their opposition to restrictions on e-cigarettes, so I shall avoid naming names. But, without wishing to be party political, my sense is that Labour MEPs are more in favour of such restrictions than those of any other parties, and I would echo that sentiment. Two, he says, have particular influence. The European Parliament's rapporteur, lead negotiator, is Linda McCavan, who represents Yorkshire and the Humber, and with whom I often work closely, although it seems that we may disagree on this issue. The leader of the UK Labour delegation is Glenys Wilmot MEP from the East Midlands, and I understand that she has tabled a number of amendments calling for tight restrictions on the use of e-cigarettes. The responses I received to my cons consultation can be found on my website, and if you want to fill in my general survey on my website, please click here. Please go and do that. Please do. And in bold he's got here, in my opinion, nothing is more persuasive in making people think afresh about this issue than the personal testimony of addicted smokers who have turned to the use of e-cigarettes. Mass emails of identical letters are particularly ineffective in my experience. They become simply an annoyance. It's particularly effective if the letters come from people who live in the region that the MEP represents. You can find contact information on your local MEPs by visiting writetothem.com. If you feel passionate about the issue, I encourage you to make personal representations and urge others so to do. And I'm here to tell you, he said, pressing completely the wrong button. I can press it now. I'm here to tell you, I would urge you and encourage you to do that too personal letters from us to our local MEPs. We need to get onto this and we need to get onto it quickly. More to the point, we also need to be writing to our MPs and requesting visits to them at their surgeries because the MHRA is due to announce in June. Now, I'm going to throw this at you. You've been here five weeks as a, yes. as a vapor. What did you know about any of this before you discovered E6s? Nothing. Basically. Nothing at all. No. So the wider public is unaware of what's going on. No. Keith, you look what very. Would, what would the time scale be for the legislation, whatever it is, to come into effect? Um, the the plenary session on it is due to occur on the eighth of October. From the plenary session, it would go to um, the Council of Ministers, and it could be just rubber stamped there, or it could be thrown back for further. But it, it's, it's likely to be en enacted during 2014 and likely to come into full effect in the UK 2015-2016. Right. I'm just trying to look at it in context of the fact that next year is the European elections. Oh yes, if it, if it can be delayed long enough, it can't happen until the next Parliament. Right, yes. Hmm. Worth thinking about that is. It is worth thinking about that it's, if, it, if it's possible to delay it, then it goes into the next <coughs> parliament and it has to start from scratch. You see, because one can't help thinking, as far as this country is concerned, there could be significant changes in our representation in the next European parliament. I think if it's got anything to do with ESIG users, there'll be some significant changes. I can think of one or two MEPs that definitely wouldn't get re-elected if it was down to uh, ESIG users. And I'm not naming any names. So, I mean, that brings you just out of interest what the views of UKIP would be on uh, e-cigarettes. UKIP have already come out and said that as far as they are concerned, uh, they are totally against the legislation 
that is being proposed. Have they? Yes. Right. Yes, but there again, UKIP's opposed to anything that the EU does. Let's be fair. Yes. That's the way that one goes. Um, do we want? Do we want to finish the, uh, the the third part of the build mod, or do you want to discuss the, this a little bit further? Chris, what's chat saying? I can't see chat. If they want us to discuss no. that further, we will. But if they want to see the third part, we'll do that as well. Um, it's um. I think chat would be quite interested to continue the conversation. There's quite a lot going on there about it. Okay. Uh, Indeed, yes. I, I, just just to, to, to point things out, I mean, if you go to write to them, you will be told who your local MEPs are. And it's very easy then to write to each one. And most of us have got at least three, some have seven, because of this yeah. proportional representation thing that goes on. Now, I'm very fortunate that, or we are, we've got Martin Callanan, yes. who is against what they're trying to do with e-cigs in the TPD. We've got Fiona Hall, who also seems to be going in that direction. And for the life of me, I can't remember the name of the Labour one, but we need to be on to them. We need to be on to them. We also need to be on to our own M MPs. Now, I've already made contact with Bridget Phillips and mine, and I've, I've been and, and met with her, and I'm going to be going and meeting with her again, and I think we're going to go together, you and I. Nice. Um, and we'll, we'll try and put a... Um, a conjoined face on it and, and, and just let her know that this actually is, uh, it's not just slightly important, it's it's very important. And uh, I, I would say to everybody out there, I mean, I'm, I'm putting about 18 hours a day into this at the minute, trying to keep up with everything that's going on. I'm going to be reading through all 1300 amendments as soon as they're made available to me and I'm going to be trying to get on top of what's going on so that we can point people in various different directions. The, the SWAF campaign, that we've been running, which you're aware of, I think. Um, this is this is the video campaign that, that, that uh, Andy Sutton's been doing that's raised over 15,000 so far to put all of this kind of stuff together. It's proving to be successful. What we've been doing has been successful because we've been able to inform MEPs, but it's now really vitally important that we inform more. Now, I know many of you um, will have had emails back from, oh, why does my memory go? Div server, and I've also had one from uh, Kasim, Sajad Kasim, replying to the emails that we sent out last Saturday. They are Conservative members of the European Parliament, and they are on board. The Conservatives appear to be there, but they're both saying in the, in the emails that I've had from them, we need help, we need people to, to contact their MEPs and to inform their MEPs of what it's going to mean to them if e-cigs are taken basically out of circulation, because that's what this mm -hmm. means. It's not an actual ban, it's a de facto ban. What that means is that e-cigs like these, or the juice that we're using them, will effectively be prohibited from sale unless they achieve a marketing authorisation. But what they're not telling us is what the marketing authorisation is going to require. And what they're not telling us is what it's going to cost. So effectively, it is a ban. It doesn't matter which way Linda McCavan tries to paint it, it is a ban. It doesn't matter which way the World Health Organization tries to paint it, it is a ban. It is a ban. It is that simple. And we've got to fight this with every last ounce of strength that we've got. So what we're being told by the, the sympathetic MEPs is we need to get hold of these people, we need to give them our stories, but it's no good me putting up a letter somewhere on a website. Yeah. What, and everybody copying it and sending it. You've got to send your own what story. What information have we got as to what the public's view is in other European countries? Be, be, because I think it's fairly common knowledge that southern European countries take a much more relaxed view on smoking generally than the northern European countries and central European countries. I'm thinking of the likes of Spain, Portugal, I mean, what, do we know what, what thinking, what pressure they brought to bear on their members? Well, we do know that the Italian Senate, the Greek Senate, the Italian Congress, um, they've all put in reasoned opinions, what's called reasoned opinions, which basically say, no, we don't like it. Right, right, yeah. Well, that, that would f follow what I'm saying, wouldn't it? Yes. The, the southern European countries. I mean, I'm thinking particularly of Spain. Well, um, the, the, the fact of the matter is, as, as 
was evidenced by what Chris Davis had to say. This needs to be a pan-European thing. Now, I know we have German viewers. I know we have French viewers. I don't know whether we've got Spanish. We may have Italian. Wherever it is you are, get hold of your people in your country, no matter where it is, and tell them they need to be writing. If they don't, it's, it's all just going to go. It's all just going to go. I'm cautiously optimistic that we're going in the right direction, but we're definitely not there yet. There's a long way to go. There's a big fight, and it's an uphill fight, because unfortunately, as Chris Davies mentioned, the Labour lot, the socialists, the left-wingers, seem to be the ones that are against, and unfortunately, they have got a majority in Europe. So we need to be talking to all of them, not just the ones on the Envy Committee, but all of them. Tell them all your story, get as many email addresses as you can and let them all go, let them all know, but make sure you do talk to your MEP, ring their constituency office, talk to them, get as much information to them as you can. Um, and you know, I'm gonna be doing it, Keith's gonna be doing it, we're all gonna be doing it, we all need to be doing it, it's, it's vitally important. So in Germany, please tell everybody in Germany, tell everybody in France, everybody in Italy, everybody in Denmark, poor buggers in Denmark are struggling to start with it, make it even worse for them. Everywhere, Finland particularly, all over the place, get get everybody together, get writing. Those, I'm sorry I'm ranting and I'm getting a bit on my soapbox, but this you, means you see, so much. I, I think what a lot of us don't get a grasp of, and I mean, it's part of the whole European issue, isn't it? The, the, the culture of the organisation, the remoteness of the organisation, its bureaucracy, and finding a way through that. Um, you know, it's reaction to pressure groups. I don't know. You know, uh, you know, it, 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 it's all part of the unpopularity of the whole European culture. A failure to understand it, how it operates, its remoteness, cultural differences and all the rest of it. And th that's where I don't think we can get through. I may be wrong. I'd like to think I was wrong. Well, it's, it's kind of, if we don't try, we stand no chance. True. If we, if we don't do anything, we stand no chance. If we sit back and wait for Clive Bates and Jerry Stimson and Jacques Le Uzek and um, Jean-Francois Etté and one or two others, uh, Pelosa and, 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 and others, to go and do it on our behalf, it's not going to happen. If we sit and wait for Aceta to do it on our behalf, it's not going to happen because they won't listen to Aceta. Aceta is the trade. They won't listen to them. If we sit and wait for Eka to do it, again, the same thing's going to happen. It's just, they're just tiny little voices. They're seen as little lobbyists. But if every last one of the 700,000 eSig users in the UK put finger to keyboard or pen to paper and contacted their MEP, the effect has got to be much more noticeable. And if you multiply that by however many eSig users there are around Europe, there's close on five million, somewhere between five and seven million. If they get five to seven million emails coming in saying, oi, hands off our eSigs, take a hike, they're gonna know. What can you tell us about the latest view of our own Department of, of Health and Ministers and, and their view and reaction to all of this? There would appear to be a difference of opinion between the Department of Health and the MHRA. Right. Because what we're hearing from Conservative MPs is that they don't like this restriction on ACs. Right. Right. What we're hearing from the MHRA at some great length, it had to be said, on Tuesday in this workshop at, at the Envy Committee, was that the MHRA would really rather like them to be medicinal. Right. Um, Can I interrupt you at this point? Yeah. We've only got 30 seconds left. Right. Um, Chat are, you know, want to pass on their apologies to Graham. Um, but they, they are so uptight about all this going on. And perhaps um, we could approach Gary and ask if Gary would show the last part of that video on Monday. I think we can do exactly that, Chris. Thank you very much. Um, and, and thank you to Chat. I mean, you know. Okay, thanks. I, I, I've said it before, we've got the best chat in the country. Yeah. Where else would make an apology to a guy oh, yeah. that, thank you very much. that we didn't have yes. time to play? Yeah. Thank you, chat. 
you, you really, I want to have all of your children. I really do. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. They keep doing things that they just make your chest swell with pride. They do. But as we've heard from the boss, as Kat has said, the time has come for us to go. And so we say farewell. Hello. Um, <laughs> where are the credits? Uh, thanks once again for joining us. I, I, my apologies for the rant, but this is so important. So important. My apologies for not getting the third part oh, in. Sorry. But we'll, we'll talk to Gary and get that done. Until we see you next time, can I just remind you, there will be no show on Saturday night. Unfortunately, Andy Sutton's been kidnapped by aliens, anally probed and released in a remote area of the countryside where apparently there's a camera being dispatched to search him for a bobo. So he can't make Saturday. All his technology's gone to hell in a handcart. So next show up will be on Sunday with Dave Kitson. Until then, I'll see you in chat then, but from the three of us here, have a great time. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.